When people consider the origin of the modern synthesizer, they're likely to think back to the 1960s and the work of Bob Moog and Don Buchla. But really, these guys weren't at the origin of the story, they're closer to the conclusion of the story. The origin of the story goes much further back. In fact, it looks a little something like this. Now you might think I just showed you a light bulb because I wanted to indicate some sort of idea that was at the beginning of synthesis. And while that's true, that's not what I meant. No, I meant literally the light bulb is at the origin of the modern synthesizer. The work of Thomas Edison, yes, the guy often described as the father of electricity and more recently often described as that guy who fried an elephant, his technology led directly to the invention of the modern synthesizer. How can this be true? Here's how. Thomas Edison's early attempts to create a viable light bulb initially resulted in a soot-like darkening of the interior of the glass bulb. He theorized that this was being caused by negative particles and built a new version of his design that had a metal plate built into the bulb to attract the negative particles. As he was testing this proposition, he found that if the plate inside the bulb was positively charged, current would flow magically from the filament through the vacuum and into the metal plate. Conversely, if the plate was negatively charged, nothing would happen. Edison was more interested in creating a functioning light bulb than studying the weird side effects he encountered, so he made note of this strange outcome and moved on. Despite having been noted by others in the past, the effect became known as the Edison effect. Years later, in 1904, physicist Ambrose Fleming did some experiments with the Edison effect where he connected an antenna to that plate within the light bulb. He found out that this arrangement allowed him to detect radio waves and even drive a telephone speaker with them. This strange light bulb configuration became a radio receiver. The offspring of the light bulb was a radio receiver. In 1906, inventor and radio enthusiast Lee DeForest was attempting to make progress in the realm of radio, and he thought to introduce a grid between the filament and the plate used by Fleming. The grid had the effect of vastly amplifying the signal received by the apparatus. This invention, which he called the Audion, had a truly profound effect on electronic sound. Tiny electronic signals could now be amplified enough to easily and audibly drive speakers. Not only could weak radio waves be received and amplified, faint electrical signals from wires could be vastly boosted. The light bulb's offspring's offspring became the first electric amplifier. Now, we could stop there and say, had the electronic amplifier never been introduced, some of the key elements of synthesis and synthesizers would not have been produced. Amplification of electronic signals is a very important part of the synthesizer. But we're not stopping there, because the connection of the light bulb to the synthesizer is even more close than that. Let's get back to Lee DeForest, who, in 1912, was messing around with his invention of the Audion and connected the output of it to the input of it. If you've ever aimed a microphone that was amplified through a speaker at the speaker it was amplified through, you'll know what happened. Doing this resulted in a very irritating whine. DeForest was suitably irritated by this whine and dismissed it. But years later, when inventor Edwin Armstrong saw the benefit of being able to create tones with an electronic source in 1914, DeForest suddenly found himself celebrating the accidental thing he had stumbled upon and initially dismissed. And even though he had initially dismissed it, the fact that Armstrong patented it inspired DeForest to fight that patent. In any case, connecting the output of the amplifier to the input resulted in electronic oscillation without any moving parts in a very simple and novel way. The Audion, a light bulb that could amplify electronic fluctuations, then became the core of a device that could generate electronic fluctuations, the oscillator. The Audion, which is often now called a triode, a valve in the UK, or a tube, is still essentially a light bulb, even if it isn't used to generate light. The first electronic sound producing and processing instruments like the 1920 theremin, the 1930 trotonium, the 1938 Hammond Novacord, the RCA Mark II, and even Harold Bode's sound synthesizer, the first voltage controlled modular synthesis device, were based on and dependent upon this technology. 
While you don't see many modern synthesizers based on tube technology these days, although there are a few, the concept of the electronic oscillator that came from tube technology still exists today in transistor-based analog synthesizers. That's right, you've spent your whole life surrounded by incandescent bulbs without really ever knowing that their invention was directly related to the invention of your own musical instrument. The history of synthesizers is as astonishing as it is strange.